biggest hero in the story of the Good Samaritan is not a fictional character in the parable, but the real person who questioned Jesus, the lawyer. In Jesus' day, there were two groups of Pharisees. The group Jesus had disputes with was rigorous in its interpretation of the law. If God has given laws to the people, those laws must be observed in their entirety. As they say, God did not offer Moses the Ten Suggestions. However, there was another school of thought which said, in effect, that God's law was an outline for life and that people had to use faith, love, and common sense in applying the law. The evidence in the Gospels is that Jesus got along well with that group. The lawyer's question, teacher, what must I do to inherit everlasting life, was one that anyone would ask in order to find out what side of the argument a teacher stood for. Jesus turns the question back to the lawyer. What is written in the law? How do you read it? The lawyer gives the non-rigorous answer. There are 613 laws in the Bible, but they boil down to two in accord with which all the others are to be judged and lived. Love God and love your neighbor. Jesus commends the lawyer, showing which side he himself tended to favor, though he later says, in effect, that it too is wrong. The lawyer isn't finished. He wants to know how broad the definition of neighbor should be. The priest and the Levite who passed the injured man were not bad. They were obeying the law of God. Their duties at the temple required that they remain ritually pure. Contact with blood or with a non-believer would make them incapable of serving God's people in the liturgy until they had undergone purification. The injured stranger might be a heathen. He might be a leper. He might bleed on them. They owed it to their vocation to avoid him. They may have said a prayer on his behalf as they passed, the way I might when I pass a beggar on the street. They did what the law seemed to require of them. The Samaritan was not bound by the same rules as the priest or Levite. He was not even a Jew. Being outside of the law, he was free to respond to the call of his heart. Now imagine the lawyer hearing this. He's not a rigorous follower of the law, but he's no Samaritan either. He would obey the law, but would adapt his obedience to circumstances. It would be natural for him, upon hearing Jesus, to become a defense lawyer, offering some explanation on behalf of the priest and Levite. He might have complained that the right thing was done by someone totally outside the law. He might have resented the implication that his own position on the law took second place to lawlessness. But he did not. When Jesus asks him to react to the story, he merely answers the question about neighborliness. Jesus, in effect, told the lawyer that the law does not really matter. It's like telling a baker that bread does not matter. The lawyer did not dispute that. He was a hero. He was ready to be told by Jesus, go and do the same. What about me? Do I live by the rules? Do I look at every situation and ask what the law of God or the church or the laws and customs of my society demand of me? Do I run my life according to the unwritten law of what will the neighbors think? Do I decide that my role as student, worker, spouse, parent, priest, man, woman, or child should be the main consideration when I'm faced with a situation that demands some response from me? Jesus ran afoul of the religious authorities in part because in their dispute among themselves about how to live the law, he did not take sides so much as he rejected the whole premise of the argument. As followers of Jesus, we are commissioned by him to serve any need we see, no matter what reasons we think there may be for passing by. When it comes to our brothers and sisters at the side of the road we travel through life, Absolutely nothing should hinder us in being brothers or sisters, neighbors to them. Mm -hmm.